It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm here with the lovely, amazing, intelligent, uh, the lady that you don't, she don't need no introduction. She here with me. Been 20 years right at, man. Official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not, not my dad. Man, hey, we got a special guest in here today, y'all. Uh, this woman right here, she, uh, if you're trying to get something done, you got to talk to her, man. Uh, this woman here is special Especially to the city. Especially in B-Town. Especially, Period. Period. On God. Period. Okay. And so just understand, man, OG Chris is in the building, man. What's going on? Hey, what's up, Boss Talk, man? <laughs> Boss Talk 101. y'all 100. Boss Talk 101. Boss Talk 101. I appreciate y'all for having me today. Check you know, it, like, man. Like, y'all really special, though. Y'all don't know how special y'all really are in the city. You know what I'm saying? To really see, you know, not only bosses talk 101, but to see a couple, a union, a marriage. That's deep. Wow. So I just want to salute that, Thank you. like real talk, because I've been married and divorced, and when I say I, when I see genuine love, I respect it. So Thank you, man. I'm I about to cry. You know, I usually don't shed <laughs> tears on the episodes. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead, let you it flow. You, I'm real love. Uh, let it flow. Real. You I want keep some my tissue? Composure really well. But I got tissue today, right here. I got time. Oh, okay. yeah, <laughs> real talk. You know. We got to give people flowers and they roses while they're mm-hmm. here. So that's me giving my roses to y'all. Well, I want to say thank, thank you. you. First of all, I want to say thank you and I receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes, amen. You see what I'm saying? When you get serious, you say in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people think he white, but I think he right. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay. <laughs> With but them kinks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play I with just, him. I just want to say uh, when I think about the things that I've recently learned about you, just the way that you be helping everybody in the city, man. Uh, it it uh, definitely something that need to be mm-hmm. applauded and recognized. You know what I'm saying? Like, Thank you. there's a lot of people that uh, you know they do this, but they do anything for clout. You mm-hmm. know, like, yep. <laughs> but you really seem to have it together. When I seen you the other night uh, over at the hub, is that what they call mm-hmm. it? Over there, at radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, Never I, satisfied. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. When I seen you, I said, "That's the woman right there that everybody keep talking about." <laughs> You know, I, and, and it finally clicked. And you I, were having a blast. I saw you dancing and stuff. And yeah, vibing. Well, when you well, first. Well, that's my hood in there. Oak Cliff was in there that <laughs> night. So, you know, I for sure was, the, you know, their support and OG Bobby. Awesome. He like little bro. Everybody in there. Man, so. let me tell you something about OG Bobby Billions, man. When I call that man, that man came on my show. Yeah. That man respect what we had going on. He didn't have to. He's supposed to be back on here, too. He's a, matter of fact, he's supposed to be this weekend, but I didn't call him. <laughs> Shout out to Bobby. <laughs> Bobby, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but we we talk and and it's just a good thing to know that the Billy Gang is down with Boss Talk One Hundred One. Like Thanks. that's something. Like I said, it's a lot of people that that we uh, I reached out to him actually, and um, it was Space Boy that made it made it happen as well. Just not only Space Boy, but a lot of different things. When I hit him, he answered. I I don't know if anybody talked to him or not, but it's just a dope thing when you get genuine. People mm-hmm. that lock in yeah. with you, and you ain't got to go through no hooplas to try to hang out, you know. Yeah. Um, but the show's been going in. You've been seeing it. Um, yes. Uh, we got what five hundred episodes in a year. I That's mean, awesome. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's yeah. up? Where Y'all you at doing with numbers? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Numbers don't lie. Yeah. So, so we want to get into you. Okay. I want to get into um, Chrissy before you became the PR. I want to know, as a child growing up, you know, what you, what your aspirations were, your parents. I want to know all your background. Just go ahead and let it flow. Okay. Well, um, for those that don't know me, I go by um, Chris, Chris Versatile. That was my original name as I was coming into the industry. But um, growing up, I was acting. Um, I was in JCPenney catalogs. How old? I, I was four. I started at four years old. My so your parents, mom and dad got you into that? Yeah. Were yeah, they um, actors before? No. So my mom has a background in music. Okay. So my granddad was in his Harris Gospel Choir. His mm-hmm. last name is Harris. So mm-hmm. technically, 
just throw that out there. Me and T, I am since we were talking earlier. I'm supposed <laughs> to like have lineage with him. Okay, I would cross him, you know, cross paths with him all the time. But we just never talked about it. We gonna get there. So okay, he gonna see this and he, he gonna, gonna be like, yeah. oh, okay, she do look like my like, Jean. Like <laughs> um um um, what's your grandmama name again? <laughs> right. <laughs> um. So we kind of started at that. My um grand my granddad was a part of the gospel choir, mm-hmm. but my parents, my dad was like just an OG in the streets, like. My family did a lot of gangster shit out here in Dallas. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, mm-hmm. cousins, family, you know. So you were raised with your mom and dad yeah, together. Yeah. They're still together. They're, they're oh, 50 awesome. years of marriage. Hey. Oh, that's a blessing. Yes. Man. Oh, yes. That is a blessing. A blessing. My brother is 32 years in marriage, and the other one would have been 15, but. So you have, you're the only girl? I'm the baby. The baby and the only girl. And the only girl. Wow, you spoiled brat. Like a motherfucker. <laughs> So that's why I be like, look, I can't fuck with you. You know, I know what a man treats you like. I got a whole daddy and two brothers. That's good. You hear me? So they had you in acting. What other things they had you in? Um, anything I wanted because she said I was the that child. You know, that my you wanted to be in everything. Everything. I was in dance, drill team, track, yeah, but basketball. I understand that a lot of kids do that, but were you also a quitter? Like you started no. it and you liked it, and then you're like, eh, not for me. I'm gonna switch to this. Oh no, I I accomplished awards and and you did all of that everything wow. everything so i think that was because i love school i love mm-hmm. to just be active okay and my brothers are 10 and 11 years older than me you sound like me my brothers are 10 and 12 years older than me yeah so like i was kind of to myself you mm-hmm. know my brother then was 18 19 i'm right. eight nine years old so exactly i'm having to develop my own games mm-hmm. and you know do my own stuff felt but, like an only child didn't you yeah mm-hmm. yeah so um but my brother my middle brother he um ended up playing ball overseas so he's very popular his name keelan haney he was like at kimball they did like one state champion in 90 you know just all this stuff right. so at a young age i was like flying to turkey brazil i met like it's just it was a awesome. it was a life that I can tell you that I was introduced to a lot of things at an early age. So when I became older, seeing these things made you want to travel and do all the stuff too. Yeah, and it wasn't it wasn't foreign to me. Okay. So when as I got older and I started getting into my own lane of things, you know, I would see certain people that I knew back in the day, and I'd be like, "Oh, they're a celebrity now," but mm-hmm. I know them with a relationship. And that's one thing I want to say here on Boss Talk One on One that relationships matter more than money Mm -hmm. i don't care what like of course money matters but i can have a relationship with someone and you can go pay them some money but they're gonna fuck with me exactly (laughs) because of that relationship before Mm -hmm. they fuck with a person that's just bringing the money Money. because our money ain't good money exactly so i just want to say that like we told building relationships is major Mm-hmm. Because a lot of moves in the in, genuine in the industry, relationships, genuine facts, genuine relationships, facts, real talk. Exactly. But yeah, so just growing up, I've always been, you know, in the industry type mm-hmm. of field. Now, um, when did you start taking it serious to say that this is what I wanted to do? Because you were dibbling and dabbling in so many different industries. Because you know that's what your parents put you in. But when did you actually say, you know what, this is what I want to focus on? So. um when I got out of school, I went to Langston University. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was at Langston, I was like, I majored in broadcast and journalism. And I was like, well, I want to do more than this. So at that time, I was known as Oak Chris from Oak Cliff. <laughs> I was in Oklahoma trying to make, you know, but right. I was rapping. That's how I know a lot of people from the Midwest because mm-hmm. I was meeting Cali people, St. Louis, everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had rap, you know, was having concerts, you know, homecoming and everything. Mm-hmm. Um but I wanted to take it to another level. I wanted to do more than radio. And you were rapping at that time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was rapping at that time. You going to um, drop 16 today? What? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> Stop yeah. playing. Get off. Yeah. Get I sure will. She sure will. She ready. Drop the beat. Yeah. She going to do it today. Come huh? here, man. Please. Uh, yeah, you I already know how don't make, do, don't, don't make them call out the, <laughs> you know, the oh, OG for real, Chrissy. Yeah, low, you know what yeah, yeah. I mean? I done hung you my know, music We heard rapping, about you, you and Low D's and them with these old pipe dreams. You know you know what I'm talking about. You know Come hey, on man. with it. Hey, man. <laughs> Drop the beat. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that what Mick? Drop the beat. Uh-huh. <laughs> she <laughs> might surprise you. No. You know? Hey, listen, man. It, it wouldn't be a surprise because I know already you know you niggas rap. All you niggas rap. <laughs> <laughs> It don't surprise oh, me. And and, and with freestyle, I freestyled the other day. You heard it. You know, I, I know. got a little something. Did you do good? Something. Did you do good? He did good. I okay. did my thing. You know what I'm saying? I get up in there when I want to. Yeah. You niggas is very talented. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, Go God. Ahead. 
Um, where was we at before we got up? <laughs> trying to give me the freestyle, but I got you though. You drop a beat, I'm gonna say a little something. You're song. talking about your music and stuff like that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I was doing music at Langston and then I was like, you know what, I need to get into something more. more. So I end up transferring to OSU in mm-hmm. Stillwater and that's where I end up graduating from. But I was like, I got with my advisor, I was like, you know, what is it? I wanna do this, do this. She's like, major in PR. Major in public relations. She was like, you can deal with media. You can deal with communications. You can deal with writing. Because I write, even still to this day. And even you though write I don't, for other people. I write for other people. And see how she said, I write for other people. I'm not going to tell you who the other people are, but yeah. I write for other people. You will see credits. And let me tell you. Oh, okay. So, okay. That's what she do. She get on here and ask people, do you write your own music? And like they going to say, no, I don't write my own music. <laughs> but you know what? I don't know why people act like that. <laughs> but but don't. in R&B, they, they'll tell you in a heartbeat that, yeah. you know, such and such wrote for me or country, they'll tell you that. But in rap industry, they, they feel like it's a... Ever and, since that happened to Drake. Like, Ever like since that happened to Drake. Yeah. You know, like you pulling it's not back. your experience. Yeah, like, come on now. It's how we getting paychecks. Stop mm-hmm. playing. You can go look on the credit, boy. You did not write this. <laughs> The producer getting fifty percent off top. But that's for mm-hmm. sure. Shout out to me because I be doing split sheets. Y'all need it. I got you. <laughs> Man. But yeah, I mean to be uh, like I said to be in that whole field anyway and mm-hmm. stay relevant is a challenge in itself. How yeah. hard is PR? So okay, let me tell y'all. And how did you get into it? Because you say you, you did it in school. Yeah. So in um, at OSU, I major. I switched my major from communications to public relations. Mm-hmm. So I end up graduating in two thousand and eight from OSU and then I ended up moving back to Dallas. I wasn't going to move back to Dallas. I was actually supposed to stay in Oklahoma for a year and then I was going to go to Atlanta because I have like a lot of connections and plugs there. Shout out to Lady C too. Um, She's the one that when you go to the hub, she's at the door. Mm -hmm, She's mm -hmm. one of my Alpha Angel sisters and she's an alumni Mm -hmm. from Langston University. So I want to shout out to her because I say this, um, relationships, Mm -hmm. it matters. Um, I say that to say this, when I graduated from Oklahoma State, I didn't stay for a year. I ended up moving back to Dallas because my dad had a stroke and my mom was retiring around that time. And I was like, you know what, let me get back home and make sure everybody's okay. My, yeah, because my brother that was overseas at the time and did all that, he was in the feds. Mm. So it was a lot of stuff with him going on. And then my other brother was in Cali. So, you know, it was like. I got to go home. Yeah. And you the girl, so you yeah. got to take care of mom and dad. Yeah. So I moved back to Dallas, and when I got here, I ended up getting a job with Expedia mm-hmm. as their public relations marketing manager. Um, so I started in corporate America mm-hmm. with the PR world. Mm-hmm. Now, on the side, I was working for this um, company called Opulent P- Public Relations. They mm-hmm. were doing, like, Lucci, um, Puka Leroy. They were doing a lot of the Dallas. They even did like Paul Wall them, like some of their PR work, mm-hmm, industry work. Mm-hmm. So I was kind of working with them on the side mm-hmm. of doing corporate PR. So getting your foot wet into the industry. Which is two different things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> How went, different is dealing with your um, corporate compared to dealing with your artists? Okay, so corporate is straight. Which is harder? Artists. Really? Artists, yeah. Because for one, a lot of people think they need PR and they don't. Mm. A lot of people don't even know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I saw a post the other day. um, Someone put up, they were like, um, don't call yourself a PR because PR doesn't mean PR. PR means public relations. Now, let me tell you something. Yeah, I'm like, what exactly is public relations? So there are different ways you can say this. A public publicist um, can be a PIO officer, which is a public information officer. Which does what? Which is a political PR rep. I did that, too. I was working for the city of Dallas for two years as the PIO for um, Mayor Mike Rollins and for T.C. Brodnick. So you just keep ended. everything in control and all the um, politics. Exactly. All the things that the come source. up that you need to nip in the butt and make go away exactly. or fix. The, you know, exactly. That's what so you're talking about. Okay. You're the person that is really, you know, everything that goes on. So mm-hmm. you kind of are the hero. You mm-hmm. also save the day for a lot of things. And if the source says you're the source. So, for instance, if y'all had something going on and mm-hmm. you didn't, and it, it was about to hit the media, well, mm-hmm. your publicist is going to come in and they're going to say, no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Let me create a statement. Let me create a release for you and mm-hmm. I'll handle it and direct all calls and everything to me. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how that. So when Bill Clinton did his, you know, stuff and whatever. So that was a P.I. 
a who PR did it? move. It P- could even be a mm-hmm. PR move. Even stuff going on with Kanye and Kim. How do we know it's not PR moves mm-hmm. and PR stunts? Because your publicist is supposed to give you media coverage. Okay. Your publicist is supposed to make sure that you have all the dots connected. Now they do have some publicists that work with uh, marketing more and managing and just brand developing mm-hmm. because it's so many entities in PR. Mm-hmm. Um, but I only got in it because it because all we ever hear about is PR. We don't yeah. ever hear about all these other branches that come off of that. Exactly, because a true PR, a true publicist will tell you all the other branches. Mm-hmm. People that just call themselves PRs or just do PR work, they're going to just tell you, oh, yeah, PR. Can PR person do all of the everything else? Oh, or yeah. you have to be just specially trained for that? No, this is the thing. You don't even technically, I'm going to say this, you technically don't have to even have a degree to do it. But if you want, if you want to do it in pub, in 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 a political or corporate America, then you have to yeah, have you that have degree. to have a degree, and of course that gives you more, you know, leverage under your belt mm-hmm. because you have more experience. But right. just because I was over here, you know, doing it doesn't mean that I'm better than the person that was doing it for Live Nation. And if a person who is doing it for Live Nation or for the artist, can they branch off and and they don't have a degree? Can they branch off and get into the political side of it? Oh, without definitely without the degree. It, and that's relationships. Okay, that's where your relationship matters because relationships can make paperwork go away. Who get paid more? It just really depends on who you are. Like for instance, because you think that you know maybe the government pay you a little bit more than. Okay, so I was making about. I'm just going to be real Mm because it's public. You know, I was making about 27 an hour. Okay. So it went from hourly to salary. Mm -hmm. So it's set. See, that's how they try to cheat you. (laughs) Exactly. Salary. So this is my mentality. I was up at 5 a.m. Not going to sleep till 11 Mm p.m. I was always Mm -hmm. on call. Um, if because you gotta understand, I'm dealing with the city manager and the mayor of Dallas. Mm -hmm. Period. You know what I'm saying? Shit is always happening in the city fire in the whatever guess what the city managers is over the fire department and i was i came in with chief hall so you're almost like a um assistant a secretary a Exa- everything. executive assistant all that mm-hmm. to them because you're handling so much stuff now, and although they have those people who have those titles still they working still for call them. you too because you still have to be on call with them yeah you know, because okay. sometimes the executive assistant is getting all this stuff for them while you're the one over here in the office creating, you know, the the and press. you have to communicate with all of the other oh, yeah. people, so you know that they're not trying to do what you're doing, and vice versa. So everybody yes. know what their role is. And PR and marketing matters it, in every company. It, I don't care what company you have, you're going to see a PR and marketing department. Mm-hmm. You can't advertise your business without marketing. Mm-hmm. You can't do anything with, you know, and not saying that people don't have these departments. Sometimes like you will be your own PR, like for shit, five, six years, I was my own PR for my own self, my mm-hmm. own brand. Mm-hmm. And like, that's how I move now. I just want people to know that you don't have to, like a lot of people say, I need you as a PR. You might don't, you might need a consultation with me. And I can consult you on certain things that you can do and who you might need to. And I might can connect dots with you for some people, but you might not truly need a PR. Describe um, a situation where a person or individual might need or a company might need a PR. Okay, so let's say um, a, a CEO wakes up in the morning and someone in his company shoots other employees. Mm hmm. That's the PR move you need because first of all, the CEO don't know what's going on. He has no idea. So he does not need to talk to anyone Mm -hmm. about anything. You need to talk to your PR first. Your PR is going to go find out. Let's see what's going on. Let me get all the information and make sure everybody be quiet. Yes, because they shut it all down. Right. And then that's when you start, you know, making sure you regulate what you're going to put out for the press. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You definitely need a PR for that. Um, if you want to get in the music industry and you just want to connect with somebody and have marketing for your brand, sometimes that's not a PR job. Sometimes mm-hmm. you might need a promoter or you might need someone that specializes in marketing. So when does an artist need a PR? When, only when something goes wrong? Well, not Is only when it go wrong, but anytime they need, let's say, okay, you know, the blue checks people get. Mm-hmm. We the ones do it. Other it, The legit blue checks but you know the, okay the because, legit not the because fake ones. because that's the thing i'll be i'll be cracking up about this blue check thing because um online on social media you see some people who have 
two thousand subscribe um, followers mm-hmm. and have a blue check, but mm-hmm. then you see somebody who have one hundred and fifty thousand followers and don't have a blue check. So and the followers like, don't matter. That don't matter because you got some executives at Rock Nation that mm-hmm. got three hundred followers and, and they, they got, got a blue, blue check. check because they are executive at Rock Nation. Mm-hmm. They're known. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And the the whole thing about a verification. So a badge, regular person like because. I've went on um, like my Instagram because you can go on there and apply for it yourself. Exactly. So why would I need a PR to go do that for me? I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> so on there, it asks you to put in press. They need to know that you are somebody that nobody else can have your name for one, mm-hmm. that you are somebody that you're more than just in Dallas. You have mm-hmm. to be nationwide. Mm-hmm. You have to somebody in Kentucky, in Ohio, in Cuba, Dominic, everywhere needs to know you. Mm-hmm. If you're not known like that, then why are you verified? You can mm-hmm. be verified in your hood, but why you need to be verified in a public domain? Mm-hmm. Why should I give you a public platform to be verified? So when you have those little links, they have links. You can go get verified. They have you fill out your information. They have you upload your ID or, you know, to right. verify as you, right? Right. And then they say, now, give me all your sources that we can verify that you're this important. That's mm-hmm. basically what they want you to give them. Show me you're important. Well, your publicist has created press releases for you. That's on the billboard. That's on the hip hop weekly. That's on the Dallas morning news. That's on CNN news. That's on Fox news. You may have media coverage for, you know, um, a live nation event. And, you know, it's, it's so many things, but they are nationwide. Mm hmm. And those are the repressed releases that they need on IG to verify you. Now, you got people that are doing what I call fake verifications. Mm-hmm. And, and it get took. Like, when you start seeing people pages get took, they done did some fake shit. Mm-hmm. Now, you can go on there and deactivate your account yourself whenever you just be like, I'm done with social media for a week or a day or two. Mm-hmm. But when you start seeing people accounts gone, they come back, I was hacked at 457. Not saying hacking don't happen. Because mm-hmm. it do. If you go in there and you click on something you ain't supposed to, you probably get hacked. Mm-hmm. But for those people that had all these followers and a blue check, Instagram, I got a homegirl working Instagram. You hear me? Like, she lets you know, like, girl, they be they, they can see it. Mm-hmm. It's just so many people. They just go it's one by lot. one. Yeah. It's a lot. But they start snatching them because their system is going to do it automatically. Yeah. They know they didn't get because you Because we, we get hit up in our DMs all the time about that blue check verification. He gets um, texts about it. Yeah, I talk to him, and too. Yeah. Who I like be, talking to? He be meddling. Yeah. He be I meddling. Say, hey, nigga, what's up? What you going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to do nothing with him. But I, I still be acting up with him. It be an African or something. I had yeah. A, oh, you, yeah. They be trying to get Africans. Because let me tell you what they Some is niggas are desperate. Crazy. I don't care. They go in and get your followers because they want your followers. Mm. That's it's like it's like they send this bot out because we do a lot of like that's what we do in PR world too. We get we sit down and we talk about all these algorithms and we talk about like analytics and things like that to make people pages grow. Mm-hmm. And one of the things is they have a lot of bots out here that are attacking people's social media. So I can't get on now. the verification thing, you know. Like I said, I'm not one of those guys that really care to entertain uh, what everybody else cares to love anyway. Like you said, something you said about the 300. Not only are there people that have 300 that have verification checks, there are people that got 300 that mean so much more than without a verification mm, check. Facts. You just got to be up on top of your relationship you don't building. Ever know. Like you facts. said earlier, the building relationship part, yes. it'll open all those doors for you. Exactly. And, and it ain't about how many followers and subscribers you got at, at the all. end of the day. It's more about do I really rock with that person whenever I'm in town or if I'm going over here or if right. I fly out here? Can I call this person yeah. when I mm-hmm. touch down? You know, yeah. would they look out for me if something happened in that's this area? Right. You know, that matters. Yeah. That truthfully matters. And that's what I think we get so confused. Like, I come from an era. I'm about to be 40 next year. So Girl, I come you from look an era. Good. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, you, my you, daughter finna be 22 in March. Mine, so. I ain't even tell you how old my son is. It's crazy, <laughs> man. It's but crazy. we, but you know what? We don't crack. And mm-hmm. it doesn't say you ain't went through nothing because we all don't went through some stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what it says is that you take good care of yourself. Yeah. You appreciate yourself. Yeah. And you're going to do what you need to do to make sure you're good. You yeah. know? Mm-hmm. Well, I Health wanna, as well. I just, you know, I see you. I, I was going through your IG. I see you. How do, how, what does Bebe mean to you? Because you always supporting him. I want to just, just hear. So, um, I've been. Link, I've been I've been linking with Bebe probably for about over ten years. He be dope. He be running maybe, through the city, man. Maybe maybe a little longer than I want to say maybe fifteen. 
Um, and let me tell you about baby. So I remember when we were younger, we would go to Coco Palace in Shreveport, yeah, that's right? that's my spot. I used to go through there. Yeah, and so we'll go gamble, then we'll go kick it at the club, you know, and he'll be up there just, you know, woo-woo-woo. So I've always been connected to radio. Yeah. Um, From when DJ Greg Street was here, hey. from Coco Butter, even when Cat Daddy was in the streets before Cat Daddy got on air. Yeah. And so when Bebe came to Dallas on K104, I was like, that's the dude that... That Coco Pitt. Well, that Coco Pitt. Yeah. Oh, that's mm-hmm. lit. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Oh, he down here now. And so every time I, I would be out doing my PR, my marketing. Well, no, no. Let me go back. I would be out hustling doing my artists because we were selling CDs yeah. back mm-hmm. in the day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. They want this social media stuff. So we were literally like popping trunk, selling CDs, giving flyers. Bebe was always open to me as a female artist. Mm-hmm. He would be like, oh, yeah, let me see your shit. Let me, let me hear it. And so one day he let me know that he heard it or was listening and that would matter back then that matter. Mm-hmm. because you'll be like oh shit you like yeah man you got something you got something he seen me one day oh. and was like he can tell you about your music yeah and when you can do that then that right there established me and him to develop a, a relationship, relationship. Right. Dope. That's and dope. so from that point on anything he does you know, I'm going to support it long as it makes sense for me Definitely. and even with him, you know. And but he still supports you in what you're doing right exactly, now. Exactly, exactly. That, that, and that's the part about yeah. building relationships, man. You guys have grown over time. It's not a one-way time. thing. Yeah, exactly. y'all grown over time and really established a relationship oh, and, yeah. and the stuff that you both do. You know, iron sharpens iron. Mm-hmm. Facts. So I definitely, I mean, the way that, like I say, the city evolves around a lot of different events that happen from uh, whether it be from Bay Bay, whether it be from 97.9, K104. And what they have going and, on is uh, awesome. Um, uh, just, uh, what else? 97.9, K104, 94.5. We had Vida Loca. Loca. Yeah. Everybody. Vida Loca been on her. Love, love That's Vida my Loca, sis. man. She just hosted. So I do an event. It was on Channel 8. I'll send y'all the link, but I'm okay. doing it again this year. I do the Black Wall Street event. Now, of mm-hmm. course, I went to school in Oklahoma. So, of mm-hmm. course, I got... Tulsa, just a lot of people from Tulsa and just going up there. One of the girls I rapped with, Melanie Fields, which she's over the WWE. What was her rap name? Mellow Key. Ooh. Okay. Mellow you know, Key. I'm going to ask, right? Yeah. I'm with mm-hmm. that book. Crap. Yeah, Mellow Key. Mellow um, Key. And she's, her name is Melanie Fields. She's now the um, athletic director over the WNBA in Tulsa. I think the Tulsa Shock oh, awesome. or something. But, um, and it's, it, that's what I love seeing, like how a lot of us grew up together. And, and excelling. Like, and yes. And then we're in a different lane, but we're still mm-hmm. doing what we love to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but she was one of the people in um, Tulsa that parents, not parents, but grandparents was a part of the Black Wall Street Okay, in Tulsa, the massacre. And she knows the history and she everything. She knows the history. So mm-hmm. as I was up there in Oklahoma at Langston, because Langston is an HBCU, mm-hmm. you learn about all those things. And what I incorporated from that was we are the shit. We've always been the shit. Black mm-hmm. people, the shit. King and queens, ain't no if ands, or buts about it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? We are true humans. So I say that to say what I say. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to make sure that in Dallas, we don't have to be in competition. We don't have to, you know, talk about one another or just hate for no reason. We need to put more support in one another. So what I did, I developed the Black Wall Street Expo. And it has all black businesses in one building. Um, and it's by black, support black. We just keeping that dollar generated within our culture, even outside of that. So um, the first one I did was last year because I, I did some other events, but it wasn't called the Black Wall Street Expo. Mm-hmm. Um, but we did one last year and Vita Loca hosted. And shout um, yeah, shout out Vita. C. Ray, the artist, he came and dropped off a Jay-Z like painting that they gave away. We had like... The bar team, I'm going to tell you like this, we had over 50 different business entities and I had got like bounce houses to Shower Parker. You know, it was it was mm-hmm. dope. Dr. Mm-hmm. Rose was a speaker. It was so dope that everyone was like, when are you doing it again? When are right. you doing it again? So this year, um, shout out to Napa, Spain as mm-hmm. well. Um, she, We're going to host it at her event center, at her Where studio. It's downtown like Griffin area. Okay. Um, so you know she's on K one hundred and four. She's mm-hmm. also Rudy's granddaughter. Okay. And she does a lot of stuff in the community. A lot mm-hmm. of stuff as well for the artists that come to Dallas. You know her girls are dancers. They, you know, support and do the video. So mm-hmm. what we're trying to do is just keep everything in that and, loop. So right. I would love for y'all to come out. Um, it's going to be in June. I'll send you guys information. But set up y'all podcast out there. You know, and interview some of these businesses and things of that nature. But it's it's dope. Like, we have face painting for the kids, bounce houses, popcorn. That's working. 
I like actors. It. Like we had actually had some of the, the actor that's on the Triple D review, and I'll talk about that too because I do acting and casting. Okay, but Which the actor? Triple D, uh, Big Lou, Lamar Strait, Brandon Christie. Okay, okay. So he did a um, monologue for the event at the Black Wall Street. So I even had like a little girl. She did a play, you know, a little poem. It was so super dope. Um, so yeah, we we're doing it again that's this dope, year, man. I lo I love your energy and the way that you got go out here and formulate these things mm -hmm. and build these relationships and can bring. That's a gift to be able to bring something to bring together people like together that. because we've always said, you know, um, <clears throat> when you look at Dallas compared, and I'm gonna compare it to Atlanta because we've always heard Atlanta they have this closeness, they come together, yeah. and support each other and do business with each other as black people. And I'm like, Dallas needs that. Yes. And I'm like, why don't Dallas have that? What it is about Dallas, why we can't create that here? So, uh, yeah, so let back at it. Uh, back at it again. Hey, my God. Back, back at, at it again. It again. <laughs> Shout out to Yellow Beasy, man. Yellow Beasy, man. Yellow Beasy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so, know, I just got to say that. You know, Oak Cliff going to ram Oak Cliff. I already know that by now. We going to, I don't give a hell. We going to be on the desert yeah. talking about Oak Cliff. You know? Yeah. So, so tell me how many clients do you have right now? Oh, okay. No, hold so, on before we go there. I wanted okay. to say something before you go because she jumps right in every time. I'm going to yeah. stop that today. Right okay. here today. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you about, you say you graduated OSU mm -hmm. in 08. My, my godson was going to school up there. Right during that time, maybe a little after, maybe Michael Harrison. He was a receiver. Okay, that was that's my godson. Yeah, and so he, he was up there with Vernon Green. I don't. know. He was behind some nigga that went to the NFL. I just know yeah. they was they was hard. To oh, 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 oh! That was make, a that was a good time what? for y'all. <laughs> I'm just thinking back because he was there. Was you remember lit. I used to watch it. Look I at her. She rap her. Lit. She rap her school. What? I used to watch it back then because of my godson being yeah. up there. Man, shout out to Michael Harrison. Man, you know yeah, I shout love you. Out. Cowboy. Same same, same no birthday, pokes. Michael Harrison, shout out. Yeah. <laughs> you did. And you know, Langston gave me uh Oklahoma Pier from Langston and OSU, they gave me a lot because at Langston before I left, I got to do intern with Tracy Edmonds. Shout out to Tracy Edmonds. Mm. Um, she's actually my mentor to this day. I can pick up the phone. So when she started dating Dion, I was like, mm -hmm. hey, that you're gonna be in Dallas a lot. Um, right. But you know, she did College Hill at Langston, mm -hmm. and so I got to work behind the scenes with College Hill. So it was kind of like my first introduction into like, okay, this is production. Mm -hmm. This is what production it looks is. like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and because she's on, she's Aquarius like me. Shout out to us. Hey, you know? get it, girl. And uh, she was just on her shit, mm -hmm. but she loved what she do, and she loved her people. And that was something that I was like, I like this. I'm going to start doing production. So we can get into that later. But that's why I'm starting more into casting, acting, and all that kind of world. But talking about Oklahoma, when you think about HBCU in Oklahoma, when I first came here, you hear about Oklahoma, you hear that it has a lot of racism. Facts. So have you experienced any up there? Big facts. And, <laughs> yeah. And big, give, big me an, give me an example of something that you experienced up there. So uh, truth be told, I never experience racism in Oklahoma mm. um but during the time I went it was um this football team or basketball team I remember my mom called me they were in Ada Oklahoma they end up getting drugged in a truck it was on the news everywhere but it was like these two black guys it was a football team they went to go play football or something and then they end up dragging these two black guys on the back of a truck um and that was in 2004 mm. Um, my mom was like, you be careful. Don't you pass through there. You know, you need What's to make that? sure. What's that? Muskogee? Right. What was that? No, it was Paul Ada. Valley? A Ada. 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 Ada, Oklahoma. Did you ever go over there? No, because I would pass it right okay. on 35. Like, you'll see the sign that say mm -hmm. Ada. But, They'd be like, I, I ain't stopping. At all. At all. But where Langston was at, it was like it's on. Because Langston used to be like a prison. Oh, uh, okay. Langston was a prison at one point for slaves or mm. something like like it, it was it was so we were on land and that they was changed it into education HBCU yeah it's a it's specialized in agricultural wow so that's why you see like cotton goats all that kind of like the agriculture department is the shit down there if anybody mm. want to get into agriculture I would say go to Langston that's why I transferred to OSU because the communications and media department wasn't all wasn't that. all that mm -hmm. they just yeah. had like the KLU radio. But they couldn't, they didn't have the professors or the instructors to teach the other criteria that was needed for mm -hmm. the degree I needed. Mm -hmm. You you said something, um, just the fact that, because 
Tyler Perry did his uh, all his acreage is uh, on on a, on something like that. Where yeah. I saw where it was a lot of slave mentality, slave involvement. It's like we're taking an uh, over situation mm-hmm. where we can just leave take uh, the negative any and turn thing, it into something positive. Any little thing we can do to try to help Change motivate our people and, and make them feel better about themselves. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's one thing I loved about the Muslimic faith and uh, the Nation of Islam and all those guys during the time when they was going through what they was going through. They was doing things they inject uh, some motivation into the people. Yes, you know what I mean? Yes. It wasn't like they were, I mean, I get it. I'm, you're not going to agree with everything anybody does. Anybody. Right. Mm-hmm. But the fact that they could say, hey, man, the white man got you smoking cigarettes or whatever, and it made you stop smoking. Yeah. Or it made, the things that made you, made think, you think about what you were doing yeah. and change the narrative and like And think you're where it about. comes from, because a lot of times people just do things. Facts. They don't think where it came from and why, how, they're, doing why they're doing it. They're just doing it because my mama did it, my daddy did it. My Okay, but that don't mean it's you right. Just, yeah, that don't mean you need to do it. Exactly. They may have no other choice but to do it. I just did an ancestraldna.com. Let's get on it, man. Let's just, since she leaving, let's get down to business oh. while we <laughs> came to this me. thing. So, so, so while we came to this whole shebang bang, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, you are one of the uh, lyricists for what was the name of y'all group? Okay, so we didn't have a group, but it was um. It you was just said tri- it was a girl with you up out oh, of Oklahoma. Oh, oh, that yeah, that was a group when in Oklahoma in '04. So that was um the LU hardest. Wow. L U Hardy. So what made you like music so much like that? Because you black. Well, yeah, of course. But I like all kind of music. I do too. What, I what's love your, all you, kind you of listen music. to country too? I do. I listen to country. I don't have a favorite country artist because yeah. I know Jason you're gonna ask Aldean me. is your favorite. No. I I'm don't a, have I'm a, favorite. a Darius Rucker type of guy. Okay. And uh Dirks Bentley, I've met him a few times and he's a dope guy. Yeah. Uh yeah, I like I deal with yes. country and I, I deal with hip hop. I love hip hop. Yes. I mean I pop. Met, I, I remember when I it started, uh, pop more Michael Jackson for me. I'm yeah. not really going there with you because, <laughs> I mean, I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and act like I like some of that. It just seemed too bland. For well, me. no, I, I like Bruno because Bruno, Bruno is Bruno R&B is and pop. pop. Yeah, you get yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's they say Chris people. Brown pop. Yeah, he do have some pop. You got to think about how they transition over to some of their songs. You know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I can see Chris it. Chris Brown, they say he pop. I never. I love me some Chris I'm so Brown. appreciating you for coming on the show because I never, I didn't know what to expect from you. I really didn't. Yeah. I didn't when I seen you on Instagram. I was like, Do you drink orange juice too? Yeah. Okay. When I seen you on Instagram, I was like, man. This girl right here, she sure is in the midst of some stuff. <laughs> it's this girl, you know. Yeah. But the one thing I can say, your page was tasteful. It wasn't like you was doing the most, most. Yeah. You know, I could show you something that's doing, They're the, doing most. the most. Yeah. Oh, it's horrible. I only post what makes sense. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because I have other businesses. So my Chrissy the PR page is just me being yeah, me. Yeah. It's just, you know, if people like that grew up with me, they know me. I'm still who I am no matter what. Um, I'm cool, funny. I got the hands. You know, I used to fight back in the day. Um, you squabble? No I, doubt. Back in the day. Back you, in you the box day. box or you just No, I just had the hands because I had two older brothers so that made sure pull up. I pulled up. Yeah. I pulled uh, yeah. up. Did anybody record it? Can we go back and see I'm the pretty footage? sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's one at Big T. Shout out to Big T Bazaar. Uh, <laughs> you pulled up. What? Right in the piece of plate. You had to pull what? up. Stop playing with us. Um, L.U. Hart is me and Mellow Key. Shout out to Mellow Key. Um, but in Dallas, when I came back to Dallas, I started back rapping. And I was um, with like T-Cash and shout out to Stubbeline and Mr. Lucci. Mm-hmm. Um, we used to open up for them. Shout out Lil Runny. Me and Lil Runny used to have shows, Young Nation. So like I was one of the only females that was out here in the mix Um Indigo Automatic. Well, she was Indigo Red then. Mm-hmm. Um, so me and her had um, albums and music together. Feezy Baby, she was with NFL um, NFL mute Records. Yeah, them boys um, went hard. Yeah, she was a female out of there. So I was out of Oak Cliff. Um, Indigo was out the North. Uh, Feezy was out of the Cliff too, but she was repping NFL. And then we had um, who was our other girl? Why did you stop Miss rapping? TV. I got married. Okay, and, and he didn't I want got you more. To do it? Girl, it it was I had I, I divorced because domestic violence. So let's just say NFL. So you didn't know it was like that when you first got into it. Oh no no no! And I have a book with um we have a book out as well. Um, me and Laura size four four of us Satiric. talking about abuse and all of yep. that. It's on Amazon, but we did it through o, with OGU. Okay, with Bruce Wayne. Him, so That's so guy. how did yeah. you overcome? And he know my people from back in the day. Really? Oh, shout yeah. out to how my boy Corey Cloud. Let's go. 
Honestly, it lasted six months because I knew that my worth. Yeah, I was about to say, you weren't no abuse victim then. No, 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 don't say that. Because no, no. because the Let people that you. I know, because hold on, the people that I know that usually go through abuse, usually, you know, first it's it starts a long off, it's time. a long time. It starts right. off with mental abuse first because they have to really make you feel like you're not worth anything so Facts. they can break you down. Facts. And then um, once that, it becomes physical mm-hmm. and so forth. Cause so they're breaking your spirit first. Facts. But for six months. So no, no, let me tell you. So. Me and him dated for two years. Mm -hmm. Um, In the midst of me and him dating, he would always say stuff like, well, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't, you know, kind of like throwing a little stuff. And I'm I'm very strong mentally. Mm -hmm. Like mentally, I'm very strong. But I'd be like, well, you're right. You know, I was more so like, let me do this for my relationship versus, you know. For your career. Yeah, like he would be bothered that I hug somebody in the music industry. So not knowing that was a red flag of an insecurity that he had because nothing happened. You know what I'm saying? But it's one of those situations I didn't look at it like that. I was like, oh, well, my dude don't want me hugging people, you know, so let me not be all, you know, right? because I'm trying to cater to, to him. To him. Um, but one thing I know is you're never supposed to change who you are for nobody. Because he knew who you were when he got when he, to Yeah, get. he actually met me um, at... Um, What's the place on Lamar? It was called Absentee Lounge back mm-hmm. in the day. I was doing and spoken rap- poetry. No, I was doing spoken poetry. Okay. I'm just an artist all the way around. All around. Okay. The rapping is just something I t- kind of took a lane and just was doing. With it. Mm-hmm. But I do poetry, writing, just everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and he kind of took that and was like, well, you don't need to do it no more. So this is the time when I was where I was at Hilton um, corporate office and I was doing PR for Hilton. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just said, you know what? Let me file back from music and let me just focus on getting my paper mm-hmm. and then I'll come back, you know, in that world later. Um, well in the midst of that, the night we got married, I end up, we got married on Valentine's day. Mm. So February 14th, it was 2015, February 14th, 2015. And we end up going to reunion tower afterwards because we were supposed to go to Hawaii mm-hmm. for our vaca- uh, honeymoon. Mm-hmm. Well, young Dolph was here with Mia, um, in the same building and we end up, so he didn't know, like, People don't know who you know. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because you don't put it out in the world, they think you don't know nobody. But I knew Dolph from other situations. And I was like, oh, what's up, Dolph? Gave him a hug. He dapped him up. He was like, what's up? I introduced him. I said, this is my husband. We mm-hmm. got married. You know, I'm all happy and stuff. Y'all tell me why as soon as I got to the room, this man slapped me as soon as I walked in the room. Don't you be fucking introducing me to no Dolph? Did you used to fuck with Dolph or something? Like, just flipped. I'd never seen this in him, but I did have red flags before. Not gonna lie. A couple months before that, he would get mad and would punch the wall. The wall, but never you. Never me. Or he'll punch a hole in the TV and the TV filed and he had to go get a new TV. And I'll be sitting up there like, bro, you just gotta go pay five hundred new dollars for a TV. Like it didn't make sense. So I say all this to say a time frame don't matter when it comes to domestic violence or being a victim. It's the mentality you have during it. The fact that my mentality was my daddy never put his hands on me ever. My mama may have slapped me one time for doing this. Mm-hmm. I was 11 years old in the restroom and she said, <laughs> go do this. I'm like, what is she? I was all up on that wall, mm-hmm. but my daddy never put his hands on me. My brother's damn show don't touch me. Even when my daddy act like he was going to whoop me, my brother stepped in and was like, you going to whoop us. Mm-hmm. So when he started putting his hands on me, I was like, this is the issue. I said to him, damn, hey, I don't do this. I don't go through this. We need to go to counseling. We went to counseling for three months before I filed for divorce. And he he stopped for a month and he continued to do it. So I just filed for divorce. And he ended up finding out that I filed for divorce. And that's when, like, the big thing happened. And it was, like, a big fight. And he almost tried to kill me. And that's when he went to jail and all that. But I say this to say, recently, I got a message from a young lady and I want to this is my um because I have a nonprofit too to speak up and speak out against domestic violence mm-hmm. um October is the month for domestic violence you wear purple and you don't know, just support it and you know but um I got a call from a young lady and she reached out to me and she asked me was my name Chrissy and did I date a certain person she dating him now and he stabbed her girl wow. got the message in my phone she said she just wanted to know she said my name popped up, she said, because she, he never talks about his ex-wife. Mm-hmm. And something popped up and said, um, let me look up her name. So she went on his page in uh, his block list, and I was blocked. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't even know this man was out until I had to call because he's still on probation. They gave him 10 years. He did like, I think maybe a couple years and they, they during the rest I on probation. I thought they were supposed to contact you and let you know when the person is well, out. Well, they did, but I didn't, I was no longer at that number, number or address. Okay. So, yeah, but I had to look it up. I said, they didn't contact me. What? Cause I was with victim, mm-hmm. victim advocate. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when I looked it up, he was out, he was taking these classes like still to this day. So I don't know what's going on with this young man or what, you know, and they're still together. No, Okay, no. so she had the courage to... Oh, yeah, she said... Um, I mean, she was in the hospital when she texted me and was like, I don't know what's going on. You know, my brother was in the mix, too. They was like, F that. We gonna be here when you talk to her. You ain't meet nobody. He said, they could be trying to set you up. I was like, it ain't nothing like that. I'm not finna go So you met this. with her? Oh, no. Oh, okay. No, I had no reason to. And the funny thing, I had a, I have a friend on Facebook that did something similar where, you know, when you're talking to somebody, you don't re- don't know their past. You don't know, you only know what they tell you mm-hmm. because people don't go doing research. Just like if somebody coming for a job, you go do the referrals and go do your research. Yeah. So if they're coming for this job to be your boyfriend or husband, why don't we do research as well to find out certain things? Thanks. Because the same thing happened to her where they... She had the, the clues, but she overlooked it. Mm-hmm. You know, this argument, whatever, till it beca- it became so bad where she ended up in the hospital yeah. with bruises, broken this, broken that. And so she went back and looked for his ex-girlfriends and found out that they all were in the same situations where their lives were almost taken Thanks. by him. And, you know, she put it all out on social media talking about him and all the women he beat up and whatever. But you don't know these things unless you do your research until yeah, you unless almost somebody lost. say it or until right. somebody lose their life. Exactly. And I want to say this too: a lot of people send a representative. That's just like any company. If you go for an interview, you don't most likely get that person. Mm. You probably gonna get somebody that wants the job. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of times when you're in relationships, people meet the representative. You meet who somebody is presenting themselves to you as, and. I, for me, I'm single to this day because I say the person I'm supposed to be with is my friend first. I feel like any time, because the guys I've dated in the past, even my ex-husband, we weren't friends first. You just like me. You just had a crush on me. You know but what I'm saying? to be a friend with somebody and once you get in a relationship, you sometimes you see a totally different side of them that you never saw being a friend. Right. So it can go both ways it could. anyway. It could definitely could go both well, ways. Let me go ahead and get in there. Okay. <laughs> the one thing the you guys are leaving out. God. <laughs> I knew that was he was coming with that. Knew- <laughs> well, you know it's the truth. Then why haven't you mentioned it, sweetheart? I mean, we I always give our opinion so much about what happened and what's this. But when you don't have moral standards and the yeah. way you set up, it, it, when you're dealing with a person who really conditioned and pray and do all the things that they supposed to, not saying that they too holy, you got to have balance as well. Yeah. But at the end of the day, these signs shouldn't be there if you really go on by what you say you believe in in your faith. Was yeah. your ex-husband I mean, into God? So let me tell you, he come from a church no, 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 I'm, no, no, I'm no, not, he's I'm getting, gonna, she's getting, I'm to, getting it. to it. Let me say, he okay. comes from a church upbringing and background, mm-hmm. right? But he never was into God like that. So just because he had this background or upbringing, he wasn't into God like that. I was. Mm-hmm. I, I, everything I do is because of God. I mm-hmm. know that even the movements I was making with him, I was praying to God because I was like, God, you brought this union, you know, like, show me what I need to do. That's mm-hmm. why I went to counseling. Mm-hmm. But him in particular, mm-mm, he wasn't, and that's where we did not meet because mm-hmm. whatever demons he was dealing with, those low energy demons was trying to attack the high frequency I had by bringing me down. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And he couldn't bring me fully down because mm-hmm. well, God. You know, you know? I, you know, if he wasn't praying with you when y'all started this relationship, if he wasn't praying for himself, if you didn't ever walk in and he was reading the word to try to get that balance, then those signs was already given to you. Yeah. If you were looking at that perspective. Sometimes we get caught up in carnality so much that we don't look at the spiritual side the of flesh. things. So yeah. you have to have balance. So when you look in the, for so that next man doing? or whatever, or dealing with that next man is looking for you just make sure the signs are there that they do have balance like right. spirituality has to be at the forefront where he, yeah you walk in my wife walk in i'm reading and it's always been that way yeah. from, from the time she me, met me all of that and so, not only and when when you do this 
it's not a case where you should be lead because he's the man. He's, he's supposed to be the head. He's supposed to be the leader. So although maybe in the beginning he'd be like, baby, let's pray together or let's, you know, whatever, because you open that door to know that it's comfortable. And I believe in God. You believe in God. Let's let's make this a great union, mm-hmm. you know, before him. And once you start doing that, he should start taking the lead to say sometimes he'd be like, okay, come on, let's pray. Let's do this. Let's do that. And you should see his walk in Christ. Well, I, think, right. I, I think different. I think he should be doing that from the jump. And from I think jump, you shouldn't yeah. be. No, no, no. To, he might be doing it without her seeing it. He no, might be no, doing no, it no, in no, private. No, no, no. When you love God, like when I seen you, I wasn't hiding it. I, I love God. Mm-hmm. I told you that was a lot of the stuff that made me and you be together and married in four months. It's because you love God. You and find he was somebody. His love for God. Okay, if you don't, if you're not showing that you love God, mm-hmm. then and you got to teach him how to love. That's backwards in the first place. Mm-hmm. And then you got to show this man mm-hmm. how to have relationship. No, Mm-mm. you need to look for somebody who understands change and have went through some stuff to yeah. say, "I love God and I love you too." Yeah. But I gotta love God first. Facts. Mm-hmm. That's and the that's, whole and that's, game, man. That's true. That's, and, and if that's you don't have that, it. then you you it's it's messed up from the jump. Yeah. Right. So so you got to just make sure you make that the primary thing, yeah. and then at that point you can relax and know that hey, man, he love God, so I know he loved me because God shows him how to. God love God is me. love. God Straight has up. to show him how to love. Yeah. And that's the part we missing. We always want to get into all of the different particular things that happen in mm-hmm. relationships, but these things are not supposed to be. Yeah. You're supposed to do things in structure. We say we love God, mm-hmm. but do we really? Yeah. Am I, you see what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's facts. So family, your cousin, my cousin, when the mom or dad and cousin them go to church, don't mean nothing. Exactly. Me. I don't care nothing about it. I've never been a member of any church yeah. in my life. Yeah. So that don't matter. What yeah. matters is, do I love God? And will I go feed the homeless with you? Will I go out? Will I go and, do? And, yes. Come on. Will and I so go do some when things you with me, you? Why did I stop? Mm-hmm. Why? Because all these things I do is for service. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what I was doing stopped because of him. And it was mm-hmm. never supposed to. Because you wasn't out there with me feeding the homeless. You wasn't out there with me supporting community events that's and things right. like that. You know? Oh, that's definitely it. So I, that's mm-hmm. all I was saying. I, I mean, I hear you and I, I definitely get where y'all come from. But without God, it, it it's just impossible. Yeah. A man is messed up. A woman is messed up. Facts. We all messed up. We mm-hmm. all a work in progress. So we can sit here and I could say, well, I know some women that shot their husbands. And all. I, it's a lot of cases where the devil took a, a, a option in that thing and got in there and divided like he's supposed oh, to. Yeah. And and we sat back and we were amazed by it. No, this is what he does. He come mm-hmm. to kill, steal, and destroy. destroy. Yep. So why would we set up and act surprised when he shows himself, when he shows himself, hmm. And then you call him out. When he too. shows himself. And, mm-hmm. and why would we be surprised when he shows himself to be who he is? Yeah. Believe him. Yeah. Because it Facts. already been described to you what he is. Yeah. And that's why it didn't take no longer than six months. That's right. That's you feel good. me? Because I good. believed it. And I was like, okay, you showing me what it is. And I ain't familiar with this. Yes. So it's time for me to move around. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's just, you know, God just getting you prepared for something else. Yes. You know, yes, and that was, we know that it, okay, it wasn't just his fault. You both had part in it because for the simple fact, you know that when you chose him, he wasn't doing those things that you grew up understanding to be. Right. That made your parents stay together for 50, umpteen years. Mm, yeah. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Well, you know that. You and know. even my daddy came in was like, I don't approve of this. See what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, and and, that, and that, that's the thing. I, and I I say that to this day, you know, a lot of times we avoid trying to, oh, my mama didn't know. They know. They know. And they so raised you, And you. you didn't listen to your daddy. I did. And my daddy had a conversation with me the week before I got married. He said, you sure you want to do this? He was like, I don't think this the one. He said, but I'm going to walk you down that aisle. He said, but I'm telling you. And he told him, he told him, he's like, look, don't play with it. Don't play with God and don't play with my daughter. Yeah. And his exact words. And that's the whole game. Like, like. We just sometimes, like I said, we we all fall short of the glory of God. Oh, yeah. So at the end of the day, to make mistakes and get back up again is where it's at, right? Exactly. So you got to get back up. And exactly. nobody's beyond repentance. So even him, he, yeah, can be, he can be. He can be the best version of him. Mm-hmm. And that's why I feel like when I did expose everything and come out with everything and, you know, send him to jail or whatever happened, it, it was helping someone else. That's That was my vision. Right. You know, like. I'm not finna be the one because the only reason he got convicted or even had a punishment was during the punishment phase. The exes that was there before me talked about the things he did because he had oh. no record okay. of nothing. They was finna let him just have probation. But so they came out. Yeah. Wow. And then they started speaking up. They was like, oh, yeah, he shot at me over here on Lancaster Road. And ooh, they were like, what? I didn't even know. 
I didn't People know. don't realize that, that um, and that's what I'm getting to, is that they're, okay, in domestic violence, they're like, okay, I don't want him to go to jail. I don't want him to this, whatever. But you could be saving that other person that after he leaves you and move on to somebody else, he could actually kill the next person. Yeah. So if you actually speak out and take him to court, you know. It could help somebody else. It could and save somebody else's life. What I did find out about domestic violence, y'all, was females do that shit just as much. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, is it ever flipped oh, yeah. and have the woman beating on the man? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because it's some men that really... Because you always oh, no, 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 hear, no. To is. me, you always hear that, oh, a man is stronger than a woman, so it shouldn't be no woman beating on a, an, any man. But they do it because abuse is not just physical. Mm-hmm. It's mental, it's verbal, it's spiritual, it's financial. You can have a woman that's on her shit and got somebody that's not, and she just... Beating him up every day. You broke ass bastard. You da, da, da. you mentally breaking this man. This is a man. Mm-hmm. And you trying to break his ego down. And then I've had those situations where this doing this nonprofit I have. It's men that come and say, look, I don't believe in hitting women. But this woman always hit me. She, you know what I'm saying? He said, I'm going to snap on her with that. And sometimes those snaps be those moments where a man be done built up all that anger that you done hit on him. You done threw a shoe mm-hmm. at him. Done hit him with a lock. You know, it's... it's well, it's, it's definitely something that you, you, you... It can go both ways. Like I said earlier, yeah. it's just the devil. It's, it's mm-hmm. really... It's not... It's, it's a spirit. The Bible Fast. says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For our weapons of warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. Hmm. Through the pulling down of strongholds and casting down the imaginations and every high thing that mm-hmm. exalts itself against the knowledge say. of God. So why do we keep trying to fight these physical battles when, when it's, it's spiritual, spiritual warfare? Hello. We so have a church I, now. I just, mm-hmm. I didn't. I mean, I'm, I just get sick of the devil winning. I just yeah. sit back and listen and be like, "Hey, it sounds real cool. Everybody can be on the surface with this thing and act mm-hmm. as if we don't understand what's going on in this whole situation, but we know what it is. Yeah, but we in choose the world, to try period. to figure it out on our own. We only look through a peak hole at life, a keyhole. God looks at the whole side and knows what's going on. You got to depend Thanks. on him to educate you and expose you to what's really real. Yeah. So why are we trying to figure it out so much? Get on your knees or stand up or yeah. bow your head. Let's get Straight it done up. the right way. That's the way I think. But That's it's, it's really cliche. Some people might think it's all hocus pocus, but I'm going to roll with the hocus pocus. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love it. <laughs> I wanted to um, just go back into the PR for just a second. I wanted I asked you earlier. I said, um, "How many clients do you have now?" You didn't get a chance to answer. Can right. Um, so as of right now, I have four clients. I had about eight on the roster, um, but I am dwindling them down. I just signed with the Chad Black Company, which is in Houston. He is a um, PR firm, marketing artist relations. And um, he just made the Forbes list, I think, again last year. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's taking a lot of my PR clients because he's taking them on a national, international level. Okay. Um, so a lot of people that I already have. Um, or turn did, them over to him. I turn them over to him. So they, so whatever I've already developed with them, he's going to go ahead and just take you to a higher level because mm-hmm. I'm getting more into my acting and my casting and writing and directing. Um the Triple D Revenge movie. I was the casting director shout out for Mr. that. E. Mm-hmm. Yes, shout out to my brother E. We was just out last night for his birthday. We celebrated um, his birthday, so okay, I was the cool. casting director for that movie. Okay. Um, and then also I have a um, series that I'm involved in. It's called the Smear series and a Millie series. Um, I was part casting in that, and I'm an actress in one of them. That's um, dope. I'm doing another film. It's called the Will to Win. I mean the yeah the Will to Win movie. Um, it is depicted from YB Ordinary. He is a um, uh, clothing designer out here in Dallas. He mm-hmm. is from Chicago originally. Um, we have that work. And we actually have a um, casting call February the 27th. So I'll send you guys information about that. If you know any actors or actresses, um, it's going to be a really, really big movie. Okay. And then um, I just got confirmation that I am. Have y'all heard of the Trap Murder Mystery? No. Okay, so it's um by Harriet. Um, she used to go by Dirty Harriet. She used to be a rapper back in the day. Mm-hmm. Shout out to her. Um, but it's Trap Murder Mystery. They used to do um, kind of like a play type of thing here in Dallas. And then it moved from Dallas to Atlanta. So it kind of like just took off. Mm-hmm. Well, now they're developing it into a movie. Mm-hmm. And it's going to have like some high-end, you know, it's major. So mm-hmm. I just got actually casted for a role in that. 
Awesome. So the rest of this year, I'm just kind of focused on I'm acting, yeah. acting, writing, directing. So I can't do too too much PR. Is there more money in that? Why you started doing? It's that? more my passion, okay, yeah. and my purpose. Let me ask. Okay. You, um, um, let's get back to the rap. Uh, I want to ask you about uh, your top three artists of all time. Being that you a rapper, mm -hmm. uh, being that you a uh, you yeah dead yeah. or alive any genre. Yeah, but okay. being that you a rapper, you know you you rap. She, she said she gonna drop that sixteen. You need to find I'm not gonna do her like that because she rusty. Now let me get uh, let me, Why are you doing you like that? I actually got a song uh, 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 I just dropped uh, 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 last year with uh, 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 Gator Man. Uh, oh, oh, you just okay. messed up right there. Okay. That's, 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 okay. that's my OG. That nigga, that's my OG. That's my nigga on this okay. show. Okay. Call that nigga Man. That's my nigga right there, that's man. I've been trying to get that nigga. I told Low DZ to get that nigga. Low DZ ain't do nothing. Shout out to Low DZ that didn't get Gator Man on my show. I told that nigga Man. That's my that's my. And I've been telling him, you made sure you tell nigga he got to be on Boss Talk 101. I'm just going to see if you Hey, oh, man, you know I done saying? rocked the block until my feet hurt to slabs, oh, nigga. God. <laughs> That's my nigga. You got you to gotta get the music. No, you got to download I definitely got to get that. That's she real. She did the one with him. Boy, let me tell you. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's the one for me right What's there. What's it called? It's Trillis. Trillis. Look it up. Look it up. Pull yeah, it up. Yeah, I'm, I, Put, don't pull it up. Don't play with this girl. She is not yeah. one of them. See, he think you playing. Yeah. yeah. Trillis. Boy. And you don't see his name. See, that's what it's saved on. Already. You hear me? That's that's nigga, boy, that nigga go hard too. But He'll you call me back. Uh, you shout out to Gator though, man. That's my OG. I, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of Every time, man. Yeah, now, he been on this you. show a lot. Like, me talking you. about him. Oh, I rock I with him. I rock with him. He gonna be here. I rock with that boy there, man. He been trying to get him for a long time. I ain't really trying to get him because I don't know how to get him. No, I told, you been telling I all told the Low DZ. Yeah, I, I, I did. Lord, you know, I've been trying to get him. I ain't been trying to get him too damn I hard. I don't know where the nigga at. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he ducked out. He gets yeah, to the table. Yeah, and, and that's cool. But I, he got a lot of artists. Um, and he, he, he Say, Gator got some shit he about to drop, y'all. What's the name of it you and Gator that made? I'm going to uh, see. Trillis. If this is whack, y'all, we going to down and down and climb. L L E S T S. Who 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 song is OG it? Yours or his? Christy. OG. Is it yours or his Yeah, song? it's mine. Featured. OG Christy. Featured Gator. Featured okay, Gator. OG Christy. Ooh, you said Featured Gator. I love Gator. the fact that that's how you, you, you stopped with Gator, man. Yeah. Yeah, what's the oh, name God. of the song? She ain't really OG stopped. She probably going to C-H-R-I-S-S-Y. No. Christy. Oh, Trillis. Let me show it to you. T-R-I-L-L-E-S-T. Yeah, shout out to Spotify because I end up getting, uh, and I don't even promote my music, but I end up getting, um, 400 stream, 400,000 streams. Oh, dang. You got that dang bodysuit on on there. I see you. <laughs> getting it in. Look at her getting it in. Man, getting it in. She got the bodysuit on, man. Stop Yeah, playing. you know, that's that's the rapper side. always told me I wasn't going to be shit. Is that it? But I always oh, that's the interview. That I would be. That's, the, that's the interview. Let me find it. So that's Trillis. So there. what are you? What are you? What are you looking That's what at? I'm on, on YouTube. YouTube. It's not on YouTube. Yeah, put in OG space Chrissy. C H R I S S Y. That's what I got. OG, but yeah. OG before. Man, do a bear. You know what I'm talking about? Is it a blue? Uh, it is. Car? Okay. It's a car. OG got car. It, got it. Let's see how this is. Let's That's see what Chris got. Ooh, I hear that. And you doing that pimp? He gonna love it. What? what? Wait a That's damn you, minute. That's my That's favorite artist. That's, That's why you gotta say. I call my pimp the female pimp C. Crazy. Boy, we just went down through that. The See? show just started, man. That's all yeah. you gotta say. <laughs> And what he goes crazy. Boy, I knew oh, it, man. I should have been got you on this show, See? man. Damn. Boy, I say, missed this, insane. man. That's all you had to do. Hit me in the inbox say. and say you rock with me. <laughs> it would have been over. Say. I know. I, man, okay, let's do this, it. man. Now, I ain't got to hear the rest of the song. You started that right. Takes shit. Yeah. Woohoo, she killing it. Let's go. We on this Real talk. He gonna have you do the 16th. Man, tour. I love that, bro. That went in, man. What's the instrumental call? Uh, I have to look it up. Yeah, man, that'll Find be dope. Find it, because he gonna get you to do the 16th. <laughs> See, now he be like, okay, yeah, you gotta do she the 16th. She can rap, now. my nigga. God. See, what you need to listen to? Cause I, don't need to hear, I don't need to hear nothing but you go in on that thing, man, right now, <laughs> man. You know what I'm talking about? See, he thought you was playing. Yeah, he didn't you know. that. Man, that's Meek yeah. Mill's song. Y'all done stole Meek Mill's son. Now he's thrillist. I don't know what the <laughs> yeah, hell that is. We trill out here in Texas. For sure. Exactly. Man, Straight I sure up. wish I had the instrumental for that thing, man. Why y'all get that beat at? Quit playing. Was that a, you know what? Let me see. 
see. You got it. My producer. You got. You, you got to send it to me. Let me see. Man, that hoe went hard, bro. God, dog. I mean, you know that's his. You know, text anything Texas. He Man, loves. you killed yeah. that, bro. God, you see, dog. she got a triple D necklace on. I already peeped it. I already peeped mm-hmm. it. I'm but what got me when she said that pimp nigga that was it you can't even rap in text without saying pimp I told you that nigga number one everybody <laughs> keeps trying to get around that this whole show centered around the fact didn't I tell you that mm-hmm. the fact that when I came in you know I just had uh, uh, um, I had uh, you didn't see Bobo on here uh-uh. Bobo Luciana. Did, was he? Mm-hmm. My man Bobo just look. lost his baby in he the house. About, he yeah. talked about it. He talked about it. Everything. Oh, Damn. man. Boy, and I you know, we had Ronnie Spencer. Ronnie Spencer, okay. he did you know, that Ronnie one Spencer. day. You hear, Hold man. on. I mean, I, when, when, is a lot already of people, on there? Yes. A I lot got, of people thought that was. I got some by Pimp. Yeah. yeah. Mike Jones told a story about Pimp, but how he wrecked out in the car. What's his name? I called him Afro. I smashed up the gray one and bought me a red. That's Mike Jones. And he was riding after that that pulling up video, and yeah. he wrecked his car. and And he told that story on here. I done had so and many. What's pimp, his name? Mr. Lee, no, uh, no. KLC, all of them told Pimp C stories yeah. on this thing. The producer. Oh, Steve Bilo, Steve Bilo, his yeah. he was all of these people been on this show talking yeah. about Pimp. I'm surprised you you missed that man. I did. Hey, I've been repping Pimp. That's yeah. what I do on this that's show. His, yeah, that's the main thing I do. Now she talk about mental illness, but I'm on that Pimp C stuff. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. You found it? I think I did. Man, send it to my my number here. I think yeah, I did. Well, she, ha- she doesn't you, have um, her it. iPhone anymore. She has Android. Oh, she can't drop it. Okay, well. Oh, no. Nah, it's, this is this is the action when I when he did it, when he bounced it. When he, I was trying to see if I, when I sent him the actual. Boy, let me tell you. I'm going to go in on that thing. Man. You can freestyle without Man, a beat, look can't at you? your boy sporting the heat. He's straight boss talk. Mm-hmm. But he's he doing everything with everybody. I got to I gotta go on and uh, post that one. Yeah, yeah. we going to post that I one. don't know. I Send can't get it. Me. But you know what? I, if I would have known beforehand, I would have sent it. Bro, you see how we begin that love? He did a, oh, yeah. he did a book about uh, a massacre. It's about the, about the Oklahoma. Oklahoma. He did say ma- it was 30 something of them, mm-hmm. though. He says yeah. not just one, it's a bunch. Oh, it's more. a bunch. Yeah. And he did a book about it. He did a book about it. Okay. I need to link with him because I would love for mm-hmm. him to be a part of the Black Yeah, he Wild. was doing it. He yeah. do it. He'll do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. He was with your boy I'll last you. night, uh, uh, Mr. Lucci. Okay. They all be together. I mean, he be with everybody. I'll show he you the working. book in a minute. I have a copy in the back. Okay. Let me yeah. make sure this ain't the beat. Just to make man, sure. Man, that boy. Man, you sure enough. I'm going to. Nah, this the actual. Man, nah, you riding that old man. I got That's why I say y'all you know, she rides, you know, she say, got She I got mean, it. We interviewed uh Toy, then we you uh, can do it, put your back, back into, into it. it. Toy. Yeah. We were in, in Vegas. Yeah, you females, yeah. And we posed a did your girl, uh, Rage. Lady Rage, Lady mm-hmm. of see, Rage. That's, yeah. See, you know, I was that's the see, that's the the ma- the rap music that I fucked with. Like mm-hmm. Ebony Eyes and all them type back in the day. You know, like Nemesis and cause I, you know, my brother's older than me, so I would list like I would go get they cassette. Snake tapes. And it, and, yeah. yeah, you know, you and need just, to drop another beat and let her write the beat. Hey, see, she, she good. No, you wanna see her get down. Yeah, like. I wanna see her get <laughs> and down. And I do want y'all to really jam that shit, because I'm talking some shit in there. No. I I'm got a new little track, uh, not a new track, but a little slang in there called Pop Tart Bitch. Mm-hmm. I'm getting some shirts, man. I get it like I know. Trio bitch hustle and grind. If you ain't talking like to the devil, yeah, because yeah, you ain't gonna play. Line. I ain't taking no L's, just making boss moves. Stay ass off the muscle, cause I be on PMC shit. It's real, it's real. Yeah. Middle fingers up. You gotta do that in Texas, man. I told y'all stop playing, man. Real. And it blew on my tennis shoe. I am a triple D legend, bitch. Who is you? Hollow point, leave a hula hoop. She underperforming, I tell her, bitch, to the loop. Stick the money like super glue. Bitch, jump in the Bentley and hop out that Subaru. Real Man, you know, I ain't gonna lie, man. That's the that's the sound I miss right there. The real stomp down music that really. Hip hop is it is something else. It yeah. kind of just mm-hmm. it, it makes the whole mood change, man. And I appreciate you, man. Um, I and didn't know you. Had, I didn't know you had, I didn't know you had it in you. Yeah, that's, that's OG Chris. That's I'm why real they, that, that's it. That's what I like, man. You know what I'm talking about, man. For real, man. That's it right there for yeah. me. 
I ain't gonna lie. When you said that pimp coming off, I already knew I was gonna like. It. I ain't had to hear the song. That was it. Over done. I, I appreciate you. Thank you so But much. it's just like anybody, Megan Thee Stallion, anybody that come on the scene in Texas, even Beyonce. Now let be one hundred. Y'all yeah. know pimp see what he done. Jay Z will tell you that. Thanks. He knew what it was. He yeah. He know. Everybody yeah. know. It's just people don't want to go on and be real. He the only one stood for us like huh. that. Nobody else stood up for the South Hello. like he did. Mm-hmm. Never to this Hello. day. Hello. And at the end of the day, I'm gonna keep saying it every t- episode to yeah, niggas. Yeah, because he talked. Yeah, to hard I quit this podcast. Against everybody yeah. else because of the South. Straight up. Yeah, mm-hmm. because they didn't respect us the way they should have. Is the way he felt about it. And I think that's what my boy High Boy, boy West, West said last, last night. night. Like mm-hmm. nobody really. You have to make these niggas respect you, you from Texas, man. Ooh, and then being a female too. Oh mm-hmm. man, what they ain't trying to hear. They ain't trying to hear that. Fuck that. I'm on my PMC shit. Yeah, you can't. So you ain't really giving up on the music. You still gonna drop stuff. Oh yeah, see, because I don't. I don't have like I feel like a lot of people in Dallas try to prove they can rap or can you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like just on some real shit you know what I'm saying I ain't gotta prove that like I know I got it I'll just be back here making my little money on the side and you know I'm not trying to be the queen of Dallas or the the one that come out of Dallas making it I'm gonna make it anyway you're doing the same thing you did as a child you dibbling dabbling in everything yep, just the it same never, thing it yep. never stop wow I mean. and that's why my mom they be looking back like Girl, you still, you know, they really, right. really proud. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to my parents, man, because I almost lost both my both my parents two years ago. Um, my dad, uh, my mom had a massive heart attack. They wow. she ended up dying, but they brought her back to life. Mm. And so she ended up stop drinking, smoking cigarettes, all that. So it made her life change. So mm-hmm. her health is way better. Um, my dad always kind of been in and out of sick. He's a disabled veteran, but he ended up having um seizures and aneurysm. So mm. now he's like at a level where he's good so I just thank God like I say I know God mm-hmm. and I thank God for allowing my parents still to be here um, I feel like whatever purpose I have they're supposed to see part of it you know before mm-hmm. the, the earth you know they say they gotta go or whatever right. but that's my mission ultimately is to make sure that anyone that I fuck with whether they're in Dallas, Houston, anywhere that I'm able to service them with my purpose mm-hmm. oh, really, and that, that's really I know my purpose in this world and it's, it's that it's mm-hmm. to make sure that I service my people. Mm-hmm. For sure, man. You no, know, this gator it's... right here. Yeah, man. Tell him yeah. I've been trying to get him on Boss Talk 101. Let me, let, put, he on FaceTime? Or... Yeah. What's <laughs> oh, up, man? I'm on, I'm on a podcast. I'm on Boss Talk. Bro. Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk, gator. <laughs> Say, nigga, I've been looking for you, man. You know me, nigga, when you see me. I promise. Partners and uh, he out of our podcast, who like, man, you gotta go do a boss talk. But nigga, I'm waiting on you, nigga. We go way back. We was at the same strip club. We did everything together, nigga. <laughs> Tell me about the Blue Chevelle. Yeah, the Blue Chevelle was there, but it, we always, you like I said, it's a spot for the D, man. You gotta come through and check us out, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you ready, nigga? I don't. I put I put a date on it. I don't. When you I ready? Got my appointment book. My set wife up. sitting right here, nigga. When you ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you been hiding too long. So we we moving. We had your boy Hot Boy West last night. So we moving, nigga. Come on, I need you. Yeah, yeah, I got you, bro. Uh, I guess uh, in the next in the next week or so. But I can't believe this, man. You coming in, May Low D is like this. She a real PR. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you see that word? You see yeah. that? Low D's, I'm like, oh, I ain't cutting right. this part out, nigga. Low D, <laughs> nigga, she come up with one day made it happen, nigga. You hell on wheels. You know what I mean? going to say, yeah, that's my girl, Chris. <laughs> you know, that's what he going to say. That's what he right, going to say. Yeah, yeah, that's what he going to say. I, I just love the, the, the history of the music. When I think of the history of the mu- music, shout out to uh, Mr. Lucci who, and Mr. Pooh. You come through here, mm. and uh, my boy uh, Don Chief, uh, the boy come through, and Duro Music. Yeah, we got all of them. Duro, them niggas, Duro, Duro, Mr. Lucci, Don Chief. Yeah. Uh, all of them they just pull it up bro mm-hmm. like like, yeah what we doing and them the ones I never forget that's yeah. why I tell you I don't let it, other people that didn't come on the show I don't play like that I'm never gonna block what God has blessed me mm-hmm. with those guys were genuine yeah. how could I now turn around and act like that didn't matter that's Facts. what really matters mm-hmm. so I ain't playing with that Exactly. so them niggas right there forever Boss Talk 101 is only here because t- people like that showed up and blessed us. Man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget Solid. that. Solid. Yeah. And we'll, and we'll support them in anything that Nigga, they I'm do pulling as well. Up. Same Straight thing up. with Don Chief. I'll never forget mm-hmm. Don Chief, man. I'm pulling up. Who the hell is this calling me, man? Let's see. Y'all, you <laughs> gonna... Hello? I figured it was her. 
<laughs> yeah, it That's is. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's the clothing spot. We right here now. You can come in. Uh, Malachi, so you can open the door. The door. Um, somebody's in. gonna be coming in. Uh-huh. When she gets to the door, just open it. You yeah. know, Eli. She was at the. She, she was a producer. At the, yeah, okay. she was there. A girl. I never did a female, female producer, producer, so I wanted to do. Yeah, a, I love her. When you say you know, because she was there that night. Yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, but now you, um, my man, you, you was something else, and Thank I'm so y'all. glad that we got a chance, an opportunity to really sit yeah, down. Because he with didn't you. know. He's like, what we gonna talk to her about? <laughs> you know, I was like, man, she got a story you just don't know yeah, yet. Yeah, I said, man, what the hell we for to talk to this woman about? My you PR got this woman over here. <laughs> And I and I know how God is. He always surprises us and yeah. he shows us things. He don't ever be we anything that God put us in the midst of is gonna be worth it. Because and you gotta think that. about it. Everybody yeah. that you interview don't always have a Wikipedia that you can just Thanks. go research and figure out who they are. And sometimes we might not even know the people that we can call and say, Okay, tell me about this person. Tell me. Sometimes you just make God's work. Just you just talk and ask questions and he gonna show up and he gonna Yeah. He release gonna move whatever for you. needs to be coming. He yeah. align it all up. He align it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So so um you you definitely like I said you won with me on what you said earlier you know what I'm saying about the pimp on the first of that verse <laughs> that's just all that's all he had to hear yeah you know and uh, I just want to say man uh, appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk definitely 101. thank you and how can people me. get a hold to you if they mm-hmm. trying to get, did, did we but you're not really that? into the PR anymore or well, well, no, 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 you I want to help man yeah, yeah. I still yeah. help Come like on, okay I, I'm still helping people or even getting them in the you know point them in the right direction of where they need to go so where would they how would they get a hold of you so my website is www dot simply posh p o s h p r dot com. Mm-hmm. You can go on there and book a consultation. I have free consultations and I have ones that I charge, but that's more in depth. Mm-hmm. Um, or I can link you with someone. I do press releases still. Um, they just have to pay for them. It's not me being your PR. It's mm-hmm. me saying, okay, you want four press releases? Cool. This is how much I charge. I'll get it to you. Mm-hmm. Um, I still do writing. I have a manager for that. So when it comes to like any kind of writing, grant writing. Mm-hmm. Any kind of writing, you know what I'm saying? I got you. And if mm-hmm. somebody wants you to feature on their song, Chrissy the PR, just hit me Nigga, up. Nigga, I want to mm-hmm. boss talk 101 little old, uh, jingle for about one I minute. Know. I got you. It got to be with a Texas beat. It got, got to be southern. We got to be southern because hey, since he rep, tell unique he rep with boss Texas talk so much, rep it so much, yeah. it would be only right that you put that. She can't do it no other way. You ain't got to yeah. tell her that. I'm I'll, on it. Yeah, just, just let me know me. what y'all need. I will get it done. Bro, I, I'll get it done. I, 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 I just, hey, I want to. I want to get on there with you, man. That pimp thing. I wish I just, man. Let me get my <laughs> get it y'all, together. <laughs> Check it, man. Hey, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out. 